Hello students, uh, today I am going to discuss with you a very important theorem of complex analysis namely mittag lefler's theorem. In this theorem we will prove that a meromorphic function can be expanded in the form of a series. So uh, for that first we need to know what is a meromorphic function. A function Hz defined in a domain D is called meromorphic at the point Z is equal to Z0 if in any neighborhood of Z0 Hz can be represented in the form of Fz by Gz where both the functions Fz and Gz are analytic at Z0. In other words, we can say that a function which is analytic everywhere in the finite plane except at a finite holes is called a meromorphic function. So, example of a meromorphic function is any function fz by gz of the form fz by gz. You can take uh, that function to be z over z minus 1 into z plus 3 square and you can see that this function is having uh, poles at the point z is equal to 1 and z is equal to minus 3. So this function has finitely many poles in the finite plane and hence this function is, is an example of a meromorphic function. Now note that a function as z that is meromorphic at z0. If it is meromorphic at z0 it means that uh, z0 is a point uh, it means that Z is having a pole at Z0 of certain order so we can uh, expand this function in the form of a series using Lorentz series expansion theorem in mittag lefler's expansion theorem we will prove that a meromorphic function Fz can be written in a series as a sum of the principal parts of fz at prescribed poles and an entire function. So let us start the theorem. The theorem is proved with the help of certain assumptions and the first assumption is that the function fz is analytic at origin and the only singularities of fz in the finite plane are the simple poles a1, a2, a3 and so on arranged in order of increasing absolute value. The second assumption is that the residues of fz at the poles a1, a2, an are taken to be b1, b2, b3 and so on. And the third assumption is that we are considering circles capital CN with radius capital RN which do not pass through any of the poles. And on the boundary of CN we have Fz is bounded that is there exists a number M independent of the radius so then under these three assumptions we will prove that fz can be written as f0 plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity bn into 1 over z minus an plus 1 by an or we can write it as fz is equal to f0 plus limit and n approaches infinity capital pnz minus small pn 0 where capital PNZ is the sum of the principal parts of Fz at all poles AN within CN. So let us start the proof of the theorem. Uh, we are given that A1, A2, AN and so on are the only simple poles of the function Fz. We will start the proof by taking any arbitrary point in the Z plane and say this point B zeta and this point is different from a1, a2, an, different from these poles. It means that function is analytic at zeta. Then we will consider the function fz over z minus zeta. Then this function will have poles at z is equal to zeta, a1, a2 and so on. 
So now we will uh, prove the main theorem by applying Cauchy's residue theorem on this uh, constructed function f z over z minus zeta. So we will take C n a circle at origin with radius capital R n so that this C n does not pass through any of the pole. Then using Cauchy's residue theorem we can evaluate integral f z over z minus zeta dz over c n as 2 pi i into sum of the residues at pole lying within c n. Or we can uh, uh, restate the Cauchy residue theorem as 1 over 2 pi i integral f z over z minus zeta dz is equal to limit z approaches zeta the first pole and we will evaluate the residue at this pole. So the formula of the residue is z minus zeta into f z over z minus zeta. Then for the remaining poles a1, a2, ans, uh, we will uh, take the sum of residues at these poles using the formula summation limit z approaches an, z minus an, f z over z minus zeta, where n is varying from 1 to capital N. So when you uh, evaluate the residue at z is equal to zeta, you will get the residue as f zeta because the common factor z minus zeta in the numerator and z minus zeta in the denominator got cancelled. And then uh, if we evaluate the residue at the simple poles a n's, then we get that uh, the sum of the residues is b n over a n minus zeta because uh, we, we have given that uh, residue of fz at z is equal to a n is b n. So we get that 1 over 2 pi i integral f z over z minus zeta dz is equal to f zeta plus summation n from 1 to capital N b n over a n minus zeta and we name this equation as 1. And now uh, we will use the second property, second assumption of the theorem that fz is analytic at 0. Now because uh, fz is also analytic at the point zeta, so we can take zeta is equal to 0. So by taking zeta is equal to 0, equation 1 becomes 1 by 2 pi i integral capital Cn integral over capital Cn fz by z dz which is equal to f0 plus summation bn by an and we name this, this equation as equation number 2. Now if we subtract 2 from 1 then uh, we get 1 by 2 pi i integral fz zeta over z z minus zeta dz is equal to f zeta minus f0 minus summation n from 1 to capital N bn into 1 over zeta minus a n plus 1 by a n and we name this equation as equation number 3. Now we will prove that the left hand side of this equation uh, equation number 3 will approach to 0 as capital N approaches infinity. Now uh, since we are taking integral along c n so uh, the points on the CN will have uh, will have value capital R n in the absolute. So we can use the property of mod mod and uh, modulus, and uh, we can write that z minus zeta is in mod is always greater than or equal to mod z minus mod zeta. Now, since uh, z are the points z are lying on capital C n, therefore this mod z is equal to capital R n. So, mod z minus mod zeta will become capital R n minus mod zeta. And now uh, we have given uh, uh, another example. We uh, are assuming that the function f z in absolute is always less than or equal to capital M on this circle cn and therefore using that fact also uh, and the length of cn is equal to 2 pi rn we get that 
इंटेग्रल एफ जेड ओवर जेड जेड माइनस जीटा इन मॉड इज लेस देन और इक्वल टू कैपिटल एम इन टू द लेंथ ऑफ द सर्कल सी एन विच इज टू बाय आर एन ओवर कैपिटल आर एन इन टू कैपिटल आर एन माइनस मॉड जीटा एंड विच अप्रोचेज टू जीरो एज एन अप्रोचेज इन्फिनिटी यू कैन से दैट दिस इन इक्वालिटी वी गेट दिस इन इक्वालिटी यूजिंग द एम एल इन इक्वालिटी एंड सो दिस इंटैग्रल इन द लेफ्ट इन साइड ऑफ द इक्वेशन नंबर थ्री विल अप्रोच टू जीरो एज आर एन अप्रोचेज इन्फिनिटी एंड देयर फोर फ्रॉम थ्री वी गेट दैट एज आर एन अप्रोचेज इन्फिनिटी सॉरी एज एन अप्रोचेज इन्फिनिटी एफ जीटा इज इक्वल टू एफ जीरो प्लस समेशन एन इज इक्वल टू वन टू इन्फिनिटी बी एन इन टू वन ओवर जीटा माइनस ए एन प्लस वन ओवर ए एन नाउ सिंस वी हैव टेकन एनी आर्बिट्री पॉइंट जीटा इन द जेड प्लेन वेयर एफ जेड इज एनालिटिक सो वी कैन रिप्लेस दिस जीटा बाय जेड एंड देर फोर वी गेट द रिक्वायर्ड रिजल्ट सो आई होप यू विल नाउ इजिली अंडरस्टैंड द प्रूफ ऑफ द थियोरम एंड इन आर नेक्स्ट lecture with the help of mitagliflar's expansion theorem we will obtain the expansion of some trigonometric and hyperbolic functions in the z plane and uh, this is the list of some special expansions here you may notice that in the given list we haven't derived the series for sin z cos z sin hyperbolic z and cos hyperbolic z why because we know that these functions are analytic in the z plane and we know that for analytic functions we have taylor's theorem for the expansion of the function so uh go through the proof of the theorem and uh, take care and thank you